What's up guys, welcome to the channel. I'm your host, America Mark. So today, we're gonna be doing an oil change on our LR4. If you like videos about the LR4, please like and subscribe and use the links below to purchase any parts you need or any supplies. It will really help fund further videos where I do more repair and maintenance on the Land Rover and show you guys. So far, the things I've done on the Land Rover is a water pump. Uh, unfortunately, I was having surgery on my wrist at the time, so I had a buddy do it, and uh, so I don't have any footage or, or pictures or anything of the water pump. But I have done uh, the gas tank seal and the fuel filter fuel pump combination. Uh, if you're getting a gas smell at all on your Rover, that's probably what it is. So comment below if you'd like to see that. I have a ton of pictures and uh, I can put together a video showing how I did that. You do have to make a special tool uh, to take the filter off. Um, and it's kind of kind of quirky like most Land Rover things, so it'd probably make for a good video. Comment below if you'd like to see a video for that. Up ahead, what I also have to do is the coolant sensor needs to be replaced. So comment below if you'd like to see a video for that. And this is probably a lot of you are having this. I've never seen a video for an LR4 specifically uh, dealing with sunroof leaks. I've seen some LR3 videos, but haven't seen one for the LR4. So I need to pull the headliner, see what's going on with my sunroof. Uh, when we go through car washes, we get a little bit of uh, leakage through the sunroof. So I need to pull that out and see what's going on. Also, I suspect that's why our sunroof doesn't work. Either water got in and um, corroded the switch connections or ruined the motor. But if you wanna see that video too, comment below, let me know, I'll get cracking on it. Uh, yeah, just gotta pull, it, pull the headliner and we'll see what's in there and then hopefully it'll help you guys out for when you give it a shot. Um, Oh, the other thing is every once in a while I get an intermittent um, suspension light for the air suspension. I've heard a common problem is um, just a, it's like a software update that needs to be done with the, com the onboard compressor. So I don't know. But again, uh, if you want to see more Land Rover videos, comment, like, subscribe, use the links to purchase parts and all that stuff is going to help me produce more content for you that you like. If you're not into Land Rovers, this is still kind of an interesting oil change. Uh, if you ever wanna see how an oil change is done with a fluid extraction pump or a fluid evacuator pump, and uh, where you don't, even, you don't even have to crawl underneath the car to get all the oil out. So without further ado, let's get started. This is before they switch to the turbo V6. So this is for the V8 LR4. I'd imagine it's probably close to the same thing for the V6, but anyways. So I'm gonna give you, show you everything you need for this oil change. This is probably different than most other oil changes you've done before, but believe me, you're gonna like it. This is my favorite car to change the oil in because you don't have to go underneath the car to do it. Everything is accessible right up top. However, it is a little quirky in the sense that this car does not have a dipstick. So the way you check the oil is electronically through the computer. Some, the thing about that that's a little bit annoying is you have to wait till the engine cools down before it will give you a reading. So it requires patience. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you don't overfill it because you know, like if with any with any engine you overfill it, then it kind of sucks to be pulling uh, oil back out. So, anyways, without further ado, let's get started here on the materials you need. So, what you're gonna need first off is oil. The best prices I've seen on oil for the Land Rover is uh, the Castrol Edge 520, which can be purchased on Amazon for about twenty-two dollars a jug. Um, 
This is the exact same stuff that they use at the Land Rover dealerships. Uh, the stuff they use is a Castrol product, but they call it something special and they put a dye in it, and the dye is the only difference. So when you buy, them for, when you buy oil from the dealership, you pay like three times as much for it, and all you're getting is just a little bit of dye mixed in there. Um, next thing you're gonna need, this is really important, you're going to need this oil filter wrench. Uh, it doesn't actually go on the filter itself because the filter is um, a cartridge type, but it goes on the cap that pulls off uh, to get to the filter. And the one I have here is the Motive Tools MX235. I don't know if you can see that brand and part number, but this cast aluminum filter wrench is by far the best option. I've tried other filter wrenches for this vehicle and it's a complete waste of time. They don't fit right and you're basically uh, risking stripping out that cap. The next thing you'll need obviously um, a uh, funnel and I just got this funnel at Walmart. It was like a buck made in the US <clears throat> made in the USA which is great. Um, anyways again got it at Walmart. Uh, I'll put a link for that funnel or a very similar funnel if I can't find it um, for Amazon, eBay, all, uh, except for the oil, you probably get everything on Amazon or eBay, whichever you prefer. Um, then you'll need a filter, obviously. And I went ahead and went with the Premium Guard filter. I've been using these filters, they're great. I actually bought, um, bought them in bulk from, uh, oh, what is it, the website? Um, oh, I bought them in bulk from Rock Auto. Uh, that's the best way to go, the most economical way. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can get these on Amazon as well. Uh, a little bit pricier than buying them in bulk through Rock Auto. Or um, if you go to the auto parts store to get these, this is like a almost a $30 filter. I bought these on Rock Auto. I think I paid like 4 or $5 a filter when I bought them in bulk. So that's definitely the way to go. Uh, and I think you can get them on Amazon for like 12 bucks, if I remember right, or 15. So it's definitely better than the than going to uh, your local auto parts store for the filter. Next thing you'll want is for any oil change, I always do this. I just have, I leave, um, I always keep an empty uh, oil jug uh, just to dump my dirty oil into. It makes it easier to recycle the oil. Um, and anyways, you may say, well, if you have two oil jugs, how are you going to fit all your dirty oil into one? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, you fill this thing up, dump it in, and then, because this is what you're going to need next, this is an um, extraction pump or uh, evacuator pump. Um, this, I actually did get this on eBay, but you can find these on Amazon or eBay as well. Put a link to that. Um, and then you're going to want some paper towels. But what you do is you fill this up, dump it into your old jug, fill it up again, and then you've got all the oil out of the engine, and then you can dump one into the engine. And after you dump one into the engine, you don't have to do it right away, but um, when you have, then you'll have a second uh, empty jug, which is a great one, which is great for dumping the rest of your dirty oil into and taking it to the your local auto parts store, wherever uh, you go to recycle your oil. And so if you are changing oil on a surface that's not level, like this driveway, uh, something that's really helpful to have here is, and you can see it's 116 degrees outside, I don't know if it caught that, is a digital level that can do inches per foot. So you can see the slope here, if it's picking it up, is 3 eighths inches per foot which is a little steep, um, not too bad. It's, it's probably gonna match most uh, suburban driveways. Uh, so what you need to do then is calculate what your wheelbase is. And on the Land Rover, the LR4, the wheelbase is a little bit over nine feet. So if we do nine inches times, inches per foot times nine feet, that's gonna give us uh, 27 eighths inches, which works out to um, three, inches and three and three eighths inches but like i said it's a little bit over um nine feet so it's going to be a little bit more so you're going to be somewhere around uh three and a half inches and what you want to do is 
get yourself some blocks that are about three and a half inches or so. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna back the Land Rover up onto this. And in theory, that should set the car level. And then we'll have um, the car completely level to do our oil change. All right, so that's everything we need to get going. Uh, and you'll see in a little bit just how quickly this oil change goes and why I like it so much. Uh, so the first step according to the Land Rover manual is, uh, and th this is the mechanics manual. Uh, I downloaded the PDF online. You should be able to find it. If I find a download for it, I'll add that in the link to description. That manual is really helpful for anything you're gonna do on this vehicle. Uh, there's a lot of quirky things with this car and a lot of things you just wanna check the manual to make sure you're doing it right because if you come from a background of American vehicles, uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of processes or method, methods that you may have not used before to do certain things. So it's really helpful to check that manual uh, before you start uh, working on the, on the Land Rover. So uh, anyways, the first step it says before you change the oil is to let it run for 10 minutes to get the oil completely, uh, to get the engine completely warmed up and then we'll start on uh, extracting the oil. So I'm gonna let it run for 10 minutes and then I'll cut to the next step. One thing you wanna do uh, before you start the ignition, run it for 10 minutes and then get started on the oil change. And this is a helpful little tip. You wanna check where your oil level is uh, so you can see if you wanna refill with the same amount of oil or do a little more or maybe a little less. So, to check your oil level, you wanna come in here, and this is very important, do not put your foot on the brake. So keep your foot off the brake and press the start button. Now you're gonna see the computer is gonna run through all of its things here. Um, it's gonna take a minute. So you just gotta wait for the computer. It's gonna give you all these lovely dinging noises. Okay. So we say okay, okay. So now you're gonna hit okay on the steering wheel. And then you're gonna scroll down to service menu. Next you're gonna hit oil level display. So as you can see, we are right in the middle. So that's perfect. So now we know uh, to refill with exactly the same amount of oil that comes out. And that way we will make sure we don't underfill and we don't overfill. Uh, and luckily the oil extractor pump that we have has uh, little tick marks on it to show us uh, how much oil we've pulled out. So we'll just keep track of how much oil we've pulled out and then we'll uh, fill it back up with the same amount of oil. And according to that, we should be at exactly the halfway mark again. All right, so now after you've let the motor run for 10 minutes to get it completely warmed up, the next step is you're gonna open up the hood and then we'll uh, take off this plastic little cover here. And this just pops up and slides out. You can pull this off. set it down to the side and the next step after that according to the service manual here is you want to take your uh, your cap wrench and set it right on your cap and just so you can see your oil filter sits right here in the if you're staring at the front of the car, it's on the left side, and your oil filter's right here, so you just take your cap and set it on there, make sure it's all the way seated. And what you wanna do is, according to the service manual, is you want to loosen the cap four complete turns. And the reason you do this is so that there's not a uh, vacuum pressure that gets created when you're sucking the oil out. You want air to be able to enter in so you can pull the 
oil out without creating a vacuum. So, first thing you want to make sure you're aware of where you are. So I'm going to start with this facing uh, directly at a 90 degree for me with the ratchet at directly a 90 degree so it's easy to gauge when I've made one complete turn. So, one, two, three, four. And the service manual also says four complete turns and you should be able to see the O-ring on the cap. So let's see, can we see the O-ring here? And I see the O-ring right there, so that should be good. I think I'm gonna loosen it uh, one more turn just in case, because even though I do see the O-ring, looks like it could use probably one more turn. And... All right, so now that you've loosened the oil filter cap, the next thing you wanna do is come over here to the oil fill cap and take this off over here. And we'll just set this aside and you'll see that little metal tube there. And that's where we are going to hook up the extractor pump. Let's see if you can see that here. There's that little metal tube. All right. So we'll take the oil extractor pump and uh, hook up to this. All right, so you wanna prop your uh, evacuation pump up on like a little table or something where it is a good spot for your, uh, for your hose to reach or your line to reach. And then you're gonna take your line and down where that uh, little metal tube is, you wanna take this end and it should be a nice snug fit push that down on in there and then get your evacuation pump and start pumping and as you pump there you go you can see the oil gets sucked right in uh, all it should take is just a few pumps. And when it gets to where it kind of just wants to stop, you let it go and it'll start sucking up. And you just keep letting it sucking so it gets to seven liters and we'll keep track of how many liters it sucks out so we know how much to replace. And if we need to, we'll fill up uh, one of the jugs. Anyways, it's really easy. Um, once this is done sucking it out, then we'll just change the filter. We'll just take this cap off, pop a new filter in. Um, you want to change the O-rings when you do that, oil those up so they don't dry out, and fill it back up with oil. Use the funnel, and then you just check the oil on the gauge, run the motor, um, let it sit, check the oil on the gauge, and then everything should be good. Okay, so you might get where this happens every once in a while where you can see a lot of oil in the line still, uh, but it's not sucking in. As you can see, the line is empty over here. And this is likely just because your evacuation pump has a little air leak going on somewhere, either in this connection or this connection, or maybe even around the seal on the top. But as you can see, you just give it a little pump, keep it going, and the line will fill up and you just let it keep pumping. Okay, so as you can see here, we've reached a little over seven liters, probably about seven and a quarter liters, seven and a third liters or so. And so what I did uh, was I just pressed this little release tab right here, which let air out, killing the vacuum. And uh, so the rest of the oil drained back in the tube, so we're gonna need to um, empty this out into our empty container to get going again. 
the one thing is we just want to remember we were at about seven and a quarter, seven and a third, uh, right around there, liters of oil that we've pulled out so far. So what we want to do to prevent getting oil from every everywhere is we want to take a, a paper towel and we will pull this off right here and then just wrap it in the paper towel set it down there somewhere and now when you want to pour this over something you don't care about getting dirty so I'm pouring this over the uh, piece of wood I have. So if anything spills, it'll just fall on my piece of wood and it won't stay in the driveway. All right, so a little tip when you're emptying this out is, see right now we have seven liters in here, but this dirty jug is only a little bit over five liters. So we can't empty this whole jug in here. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we end with, to make things easier on ourselves uh, for measuring how much we've taken out, probably wanna only take out like four liters or so. So that way we can end dead on a one of these marks right here. So it makes for easy math. So I'm gonna stop right here and check. And if you can see, we're at about four and three quarters liters. So I'm gonna drop right down to four liters. I'm gonna keep checking and I wanna get it to where it's right at about four liters. Okay, that's just about four liters, maybe a hair over, but that'll be fine. So now we'll hook this back up and uh, keep pumping. And as you can see, we got oil coming right back into the line, getting our suction going, our vacuum. All right. So if you hear that noise, I think, let's see. Oh yeah, my neighbor's friend just, my neighbor's friend came over to show off his new Ferrari. So let's see if we can get a clip of that pulling away. But that's that sweet exhaust noise you're hearing in the back. It's a black Ferrari. That's all I could see. Oh, okay, so we reached the end of the line here and you can see it's draining out. So you want to keep pumping, but let's see if we can catch the Ferrari. It sounds like it's leaving here. Oh, and there's the Ferrari with gold rims. That looks like, what is that, a Ferrari California or something? Newer than I expected. that sucker high. All right, so back to the oil change plant over here. So you can see, you know, I'm just gonna keep pumping until I'm getting pretty much no oil coming through the line. And it makes a beautiful noise as you do it. But you just keep pumping. So let's see where we're at. We are at about five and three quarter liters. So that means we pulled out, when we emptied it, we were at about seven and a quarter liter and uh, we dropped down to four. So 
what we've done is we've added um, one and three quarter liters. So that means we're at about, uh, if my math is any good here, that means we're at nine liters total that we've pulled out. And if you remember when we checked the gauge there, uh, the oil level gauge, it was right at the halfway mark. It was perfect. So what we want to do is add back in uh, nine liters. So, all right, let's get to it. All right, so I'm just going to pull the line off. Make sure you get your adapter there. I'm going to take this and set it down to the side. And I'm even going to let it rest on a paper towel like that. So in case any residual oil leaks out, it doesn't, uh, sorry for my camera falling all over the place here. If any residual oil leaks out, it doesn't make a mess. Um, all right, so I'll prop this bad boy up here. Hopefully you can see the fill port. And I will take my funnel. And as you can see, my funnel's nice and clean. If your funnel's got dust in it, you wanna wipe it down and make sure you're not putting any dust or anything dirty into your new oil change. All right, so a little tip, what I like to do to help make pouring the oil easier is I like to take, and there's that Ferrari, I like to take a, uh, flat head screwdriver and basically just open up a spout area to pour out of like that and flip it this way and then poke a breather hole in the back and that's going to help it pour a lot easier and a lot more controlled but here we go so we'll just dump this whole thing in and remember go slowly don't go too fast to where you're, uh, you know, trying to put more oil in faster than it can go in, and then you just spill oil everywhere. That's never fun cleaning up oil in your engine compartment. So there she is, there's one whole jug, which is 4.73 liters. So now we basically wanna do three and a quarter liters to top this sucker off. All right, so we got my next one and you can see I've already done the same thing to this one. So next step, is to replace the filter. All right, so what you wanna do here is grab a paper towel to avoid making a mess. And uh, just get your paper towel under there. Let it rest on top of the paper towel. And we'll put the cap back on so nothing gross gets down in there. All right. And now we'll address the oil filter. So here she is. We're gonna take this off. I'm sure that is a fun thing on camera right there, all that movement. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, jeez. Okay, so. All right. So set this up here. So let's grab our new filter. And that's PG6290EX, if you want to buy the same exact one. All right, so. Take out our filter. And as you'll see, we got the filter. Check, make sure you have both O-rings right there. And it should come with a new O-ring for the cap. So you wanna take your flathead. Well, first things first.
you want to take your uh, oil filter out, your old oil filter. So I like to use a paper towel and just grab it. And properly dispose of it. All right, now you want to take a flathead. This is the easiest way to do this. Like that, get it underneath your old o ring. Pull this out just like that. Oh, there it goes. Shooting oil on my phone. That's not good, but. Anyways, we'll deal with that. So, wipe the oil off of my phone there. Probably use some rubbing alcohol to make sure I get it all. Not the best place to set your phone. All right, now that we got that done, what you wanna do is take your new filter, but you, before you put it on, you wanna get some oil. And what I like to do here to make this easier, and especially you know, if you've got this cut, take it here and just pour a little bit of oil in the cap. And that's gonna make your life so much easier than trying to fart around with that thing. And uh, if you have gloves, rubber gloves, that's the best way to do this, but I don't wanna deal with that. So anyways, I'm just gonna get it oiled up this nice and lubricated all right so you just want to after you oil it up take this o-ring roll it over make sure you get it into that groove where it goes there we go and we take the new o-ring and you'll see there's some tabs in here for these to click onto so stick it down and it's sort of got a keyway for the thing to fit and you'll hear a pop, and that's how you know it's in. And then you want to take this over and put it in there and thread it. Now, the service manual, make sure you don't cross thread it too, it's just plastic, so get it going by hand. And uh, anyways, it's even got on here, it says 25 Newton meters. Well. That would require a torque wrench. I don't have a torque wrench. So, we're just gonna go by the, uh, if it feels good, it must be good method. So I'm gonna tighten this down. And remember, it's just plastic for the cap. So, you don't want to over tighten it because you'll just break it. All right, and right there I'm just gonna yep feels good and it's got an o-ring too so there's no reason to really crank down on it it'll seal itself up all right so we got that and the next step is to start the car up we'll let it run for a few minutes and uh well let's see i'll read you from the service manual here what it says to do it says Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you uh, pull it out. Okay. Okay, so only after having started and run the engine for 10 minutes, as indicated in step six, switch off the engine, then stabilizing for 10 minutes, Take a reading from the oil level display, and if necessary, top with engine oil. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run it for another 10 minutes, let it sit for 10 minutes after that, and then we'll check the oil level, and I'll show you guys where it's at. All right, so we've ran the engine for 10 minutes, and we've let it sit for another 10 minutes. So now let's fire it up and see where we're at. I close the door, hopefully. Oh, nice, the dinging will stop. Okay, so you'll see the computer's gonna do all this stuff right there okay yep yep and again I'm just gonna press okay on this deal to the right scroll down 
service menu, and oil level display. Oh, it says it's at the max. Yay, we didn't overfill it. Told you I was paranoid about that. So even though I pulled out eight liters and said it was halfway, we put in exactly um, eight liters, which filled it up, which is awesome. So I don't really know why I pulled out full eight liters and said it was at halfway. But like I said, this whole uh, electronic dipstick deal is a little quirky. Um, I'm not used to that. It's also, you know, I, I love most of the features on this Land Rover. They're pretty cool. The engineering's pretty awesome. That's one thing that kind of annoys me because if you ever just want to quickly check your oil, you can't do that. Uh, you always have to wait 10 minutes after the vehicle is running. So, you know, if you're, if you're driving somewhere and, uh, you know, you're on a road trip, you drive a few hundred miles, you're like, hey, I just want to check my oil. Can't just pull over and check it. You need to wait 10 minutes. So, anyways, but that's all there is to it. Like I said, a really easy oil change. I mean, I'm wearing sandals, swim trunks, a hat, a shirt, you know, I got, aside from one drop of oil that I got from uh, accidentally flicking the uh, O-ring around. Uh, yeah, it's a really clean, simple, easy oil change. So the last step now is just to grab this uh, little plastic cover right here. And again, this is pretty easy. You just take these two tabs, line them up with those pieces of rubber back there. So that wraps up the LR4 oil change. Uh, hope you liked it. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, comment below, let me know. One little tip I might add is uh, unless you have a special computer made for Land Rover vehicles, your service service required soon light is still going to come on or its message is still going to come on when you first start up the vehicle, but that's not a big deal as long as you don't have a check engine light or anything. All it's saying is it just wants you to go into the stealership so you can get ripped off for an oil change. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's everything. So again, like and subscribe, use the links below. Even if you're not purchasing those parts, still helps if you click on those links before you make your Amazon or your eBay purchase. All right, thanks guys.